Thank you so much for making a date today on the marketplace with me, I'm Imano Abuaji Riafi. The Bank of Ghana has justified its decision to close down over 300 microfinance companies and microcredit institutions. According to the bank, it had to do this to save the entire financial system. George Riafi has more on the central bank's assurance. The central bank in the question and answer notice argued that prior to taking the action, it gave all the institutions an opportunity to correct their wrongs. However, these institutions failed to do so. The Bank of Ghana and the notice said most of these institutions had already ceased operations. The central bank maintains it took the action to rather ensure the orderly exit and protect public and the financial system from further challenges. Following this action, the sector will now be left with 137 microfinance companies and 31 microcredit firms that have the licenses to operate in the country. So what would happen to those funds that have been locked up with these companies? Well, the Bank of Ghana says for those whose claims have been validated by the receiver from PricewaterhouseCoopers would have their monies paid to them. The Bank of Ghana is also downplaying concerns that this move will lead to some job losses. According to the regulator, most of these institutions named in the list were already shut down. Therefore, this action would not result in any massive layoffs. It is promising to go after and prosecute directors and shareholders of these institutions that have contributed to this problem. The institution appointed to lead liquidation of the microfinance institutions, Price Waterhouse Coopers, has indicated it could start paying validated deposits from next Monday. Eric Nananipa is partner at the accounting firm and receiver to the process. In terms of getting your money back, mm. all right, all your money back, okay. in this case you have to go through a process. Uh, step one is about a four or five step process. Okay. First thing you have to do, which we are doing, is taking control over the books and records and, 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 and the business of, of, of these companies. That's the first thing which we are doing. It takes you through to a situation assessment to ascertain the state of affairs. Uh, but of course, uh, George, you are, you are fully be interested in all this. Mm. You want your money. So where you get your, where your money comes, your money consideration, mm. your money payback consideration comes in is what we have put in place and that is uh, we have a creditor administration process mm -hmm. all right where the customer will be given what you call a proof of debt form a pod form all right that form sets out what you are supposed to complete by way of your personal details uh, amounts of money that is owed to you amount of money that you owe, if any, all right? What is expected in terms of supporting documentation? I want a little bit of clarity there because we understand that government has put in almost a billion in this escrow account for the payment of these things, that's the winding up and depositors. Does it mean that per your function, this money is not going to take up 100% cover, using my word loosely in quotes, in terms of the fact that I put X amount of money there, the support that is in place is not going to be 100% covered, even if all these documents have been validated by your end. Well, I can't speak to that again, George. It's very early days. Mm. I am going through the independently the creditor uh, position mm. based on the records of the company. Mm. All right. And the, the, the creditors or the depositors will be permitted to submit their claims. So we would have to go through each and every claim in, in a very methodical mm. way to establish what the true position is. Mm. Having established a true position, we would revert to government, have a discussion with government. We should be in the position, position to know the quantum of payments. Mm. Certainly, if a claim is validated and it's been agreed, all right, it, it becomes legitimate. Mm. We will know that at this stage and where I'm certain, I know that there will be payments. But as to the quantum of payment, as to how much, I'm not in a position to say right now because I've only just assumed. I asked this question, Mr. Nipan, sir, because of uh, your, your, your grounded and experience in this area. And, and that's what I'm asking about the fact that if, for instance, 
it's been able to be established in my case that the 10,000 Ghana cities or 20,000 Ghana cities that I claim that I had with me be in Kosovo microfinance is all true and validated. Yeah. I will not get all the thing back. Well, I assure you that in the coming days, I should be able to speak to that. Does it mean that there will be a situation where a request can be make, made for more money to, for this the action? Well, I mean, the, we've seen this before and we continue to see it. I mean, you may make the request, but whether it's one thing making the request, the other thing, gov government being mm. able to pay. And this actually applies to the depositors. Yeah, I'm talking about This it. doesn't apply to other creditors, mm. as in trade creditors and all. You know, but look, considering the body of, of, of depositors, uh, you are assured of payment, all right? Uh, provided your claims have been validated and agreed. But as to the amount currently, I would be in the posi position to speak to it in, in, in the coming, I would say, in a week or so. Mm. But uh, here and now, I, I need to consult with my principals. Mm. You are Head of Finance at the University of Ghana Business School. Professor Gottfried Popping has commended the Bank of Ghana's action he ever doubts assertions that the action will not result in any job losses. I mean, if you look at the size of the bailout relative to our GDP, it's very huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that itself may even qualify that uh, we were in some form of crisis. Mm -hmm. If you look at the percentage of GDP mm -hmm. that is being uh, injected into these bailouts. Mm -hmm. so, but I think that the uh, Bank of Ghana has been very bold. I, I think it hasn't been that easy. Uh, it has taken a lot of work, a lot of analysis, even coming out with the list and doing all those analysis. It's, it's been uh, a lot of work. And I think that um, we are all thankful to the extent that um, we are getting to the end. Of course, apart from the microfinance institutions, there are other deposit-taking institutions like savings and loans that will also have to be cleared. But in, in proportion, it, is, it would not be as huge as what we saw in the mainstream banking mm. that we saw. And, and, and for that reason, I think that uh, this needed to be done quite quickly also because um, um, there are a lot of Ghanaians whose uh, monies are locked up with microfinance, with savings and loans and all of that. And it may affect the confidence in the banking uh, or in the financial system mm. um, at the end of the day. Because if you look at the, the unbanked population, so we're still monitoring the situation and bringing you up to speed with developments, latest developments on the issue. So within the financial sector, the use of smaller Ghana coin de denominations is gradually becoming extinct as many people are placing almost no value on the legal tender. For now, the one peso coins have virtually lost their economic value, apart from the banking sector and a few other business, businesses using them for their day-to-day -day transactions. Others use these coins for decorations and other cosmetic purposes. In this report, Fred Duho takes a look at the extent to which the coin is being used. After Ghana decided to leave the British colonial monetary system and adopt a widely accepted decimal system some 54 years ago, the CD and the Pesua were introduced on the 19th of July 1965 to replace the Ghana pounds, shillings and pence. Currently, coins in circulation come in different denominations. These are the 1 Ghana Pesua, the 50 Ghana Pesuas, 20 Pesuas, 10 Pesuas, 5 Pesuas, and recently, the 1 Pesua coin. On a visit to the Accra Mall, some customers who received change from a sales lady only dropped the 1 Pesua coin in a box. The proceeds were to be sent to orphanage homes who received the 1 Pesua as donations. The team also went to the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange area, which is also a brisk business hub within the capital city. This is what ensued as I tried to buy sashi water. I would say the, the Ghana money now. How much? Ten pesos. That's one peso. One? Yeah. This one is one peso. So you count it. Pure water is 20 pesos. Yeah, so 20 of, of that. But who say they know they take them? 
Interestingly, this image decorated with some coins was found through a search on Facebook. This decoration was also cited in a hotel here in Accra. From the reactions of traders encountered, the question that begs for an answer is whether the one Pesua coin still has any value within the financial system. Currency analyst Samuel Kofi Ampa says the central bank must take action against individuals and institutions who deface the currency. See, every country has a legal tender. I mean, the currency is tendered as the legal tender to do business, to trade with, or used to accept in an exchange of a commodity or a service. In countries where uh, the, can the currencies have devalued, okay, um, significantly, where you will have to hold lots notes, lot of uh, notes, you know, to, to exchange for a commodity. Even at, even during in those countries, you do not deface um, the notes or the coins. You definitely will have to keep it well. Uh, people are taught on how to keep the currencies or the coins well, uh, to keep value, uh, you know, uh, because these currencies or coins, we spend money um, to produce them. You can collect the currencies, okay, and keep them as souvenirs, right, in whether for future or for display or for museums purposes or for display. But you can use it as an, as an artifact or a tool to develop act. You know that is not allowed in any current, in any country. You know, so if anybody is doing that, then the attention of the owners of the currency or the custodians of the currency, that's the central bank, will need to be informed, and then they should take action immediately on the the, the, the institution or the individual who is defacing the currency of, a, of, of, of an economy. Fred Duhu's report for Joy Business. Now, government has taken steps to protect the financial and telecommunications sectors from cyber fraud. A recent report by the Cyber Crime and Unit of the Ghana Police Service indicates that Ghana lost almost $97 million to cyber crime in 2018 alone. By speaking at a three-day meeting here in Accra to consider a draft bill on cyber security, Communications Minister Esla Osu Ekufo said a computer emergency response team at the National Communications Authority and a security operations center at the Bank of Ghana have been set up to help protect private and state funds. The Cyber Security Secretariat, which has now evolved into the Cyber Security Center to be the focal point for all cyber security activities. We're developing our national incident response <coughs> capability with the establishment of a national computer emergency response team at the National Communications Authority and the Security Operations Center at the Bank of Ghana. These developments are crucial in responding to cyber security incidents in the telecommunications and financial sectors of our economy. In fact, these two sectors contribute to about 80% of all cybersecurity incidents that have been recorded in our country. And so within the telecom sector, Deputy Communications Minister George Ander has added his voice to the incidents of fiber cuts, which incurs substantial, incur substantial costs on telecoms companies. He reiterated the warning to perpetrators to desist from the nefarious activity. David Ander was speaking at the launch of MTN's TurboNet in Accra. According to the Deputy Communications Minister George Ander, the role of innovation and connectivity in the telecom sector cannot be underestimated. He lauded MTN for introducing a high-speed 4G internet service, as well as providing a fixed wireless broadband service in line with government's vision to digitalize the economy. The introduction of this solution by MTN would certainly support government's effort in bridging the digital divide gap so that our citizens can access digital initiatives of governments such as e-payments, generation of digital addresses, the e-procurement system, accessing e-justice system, e-immigration, e-parliament system, e-passport system, and I'm aware that the police service will start imposing spot fines shortly 
and it will require reliable data connectivity. I would like to use this platform to advise that we must protect the investments being made by both government and the private sector to provide better service for all. If we continue to damage and vandalize fiber optic cables, which have been laid, we'll be facing severe service interruptions and the experience we are championing might elude us. Chief Executive Officer of MTN Ghana, Selom Adadivo, noted that MTN has invested about $160 million to improve its network and launched its TurboNet. For us, this is a revolution. And the reason we call it a revolution of home broadband internet is we have less than 4% of our homes today with high-speed internet. And this is really changing the way we think about high-speed home internet because you can pick up a table net box and within minutes you're connected, you're browsing as if you're on fiber, but you're surfing on our 4G plus LT advanced network. And for us, this would really change the accessibility to the internet for our fellow Ghanaians. The TurboNet is an enhanced internet connection which enables the user to access high-speed internet. Now, construction works of the largest bitumen processing plant in West Africa to be located in Tema, Ghana, will be completed within the next 18 months. The $25 million plant is expected to deliver bitumen for road construction activities within the West African sub-region in partnership with Goyle Ivorians. Goyle's Ivorian partner, Alex Josiah Azeo, is Chief Operating Officer of Goyle Company Limited. The with the bitumen plant, like I said, the contract has already been awarded. If you go to Tema right now, the contractor is already on site working. So I must say that we are on course. But this is a very big project. Um, it's going to be one of the biggest in West Africa because we are. it's going to be the only plant that supplies AC10, AC20, and then with also a PMB. The PMB is the, is the, is the quality of bitumen that was used on the N1. If you, if you see the N1, it's, it's completely different from the normal bitumen that we have. So that's the standard we want to bring to the nation. And so we are working very, very hard on it. It's good, like I said, it's going to take us about 18 months to fully complete. And we are doing that with uh, Lakot Device, a joint venture. We have 60%, Lakot Device has 40, uh, SMB has 40%, and therefore we are working hard to bring this uh, thing into being. And it will be a game changer as soon as it is completed. Estimated cost of the project? Um, it's around the uh, around uh, 25 to 30 million dollars it will be to be completed within the timeline yes it, it, it should be completed within the timeline because like like i said smb already has a depot in abidjan and so they are very well experienced in this the the pmb side is also coming from a company in the u.s called heatech we have had all the drawings and everything in place everything will be manufactured there it will be brought in here and tied in into the bitumen plant so all those plans are already done, and I am very certain that with the, um, with the, the chart I've seen from the contractor. Now to the icing on the cake. Exercise, they say, is the best medicine for the body, and participants of this year's aerobic session of the Joy Business Health and Wellness Trade Show couldn't agree more. As the session climaxed the last day of the show, the aerobic session was held, was led by instructors from the Dansuman Kifit Club, here are some sights and sounds a recap of the session. Fast pacing, lunges, squats, and stretching to the beat of vast thumping music, the aerobic session kickstarted the last day of the Joy Business Health and Wellness Trade Show. After close to two hours of workout, participants of the aerobic session were charged and tired, but still wanted more. You know, we started with a walk, so sort of um, heated up, and it's good. It's our routine. We do it every day, so for us, it's normal for us, yes. Are you excited to be a part of the Joy Business Health and Wellness? It's been great. I mean, it's been great, I mean, for the club, I mean, in terms of publicity and giving our people the opportunity to train. I mean, it's been fantastic. It's nice. And it's been very good. I mean, on a Saturday morning like this, which has been our routine exercise at the Smart Cafe Club, you know, we always enjoy it, yeah. Okay, so are you enjoying this particular one? Do you think you want to see more? Oh, but yeah, of, of course. I mean, I pray that the publicity should be more in future to attract or to entice other members to join or other, other you know, key fit organizations to join. Yeah, because it takes the numbers, I mean, to make it 
it will be more exciting. Uh, because I'm enjoying it, I don't feel the tiredness. Because I'm enjoying everything, especially the trainer or the corner, uh, the coach. I'll talk to him later on. He's very good. All right. He's very good. That's super excited. But you know, but you seem to be quite older than most of us. Do you mind sharing your age with us? Because we are curious. <laughs> you will be interested to know that. Mm -hmm. I am 92. Wow. Did you just hear that? 92 years 92. and he's here jumping and exercising with everyone. This is the evidence that exercise can actually give you a prolonged life. Yeah. It takes energy to go through all that vigorous exercising. So after all the activity, Blue Skies and Stutter Park provided the par breakfast. That's a combination of fruits, porridge, cakes and bread. And this is what the participants had to say. Uh, it's been great. It's been fun and super exciting. We didn't expect this. We were told power breakfast. We knew breakfast, we knew power. We didn't know the combination of the two. So we just came to meet the power and the breakfast and now we appreciate it. It's been exciting. Oh, the breakfast, everything is very perfect. I really enjoy myself. Oh, yeah. Um, I wish it to all of you to come next year. Come and feel it by yourself, enjoy it. As I came, I can see myself that everything is perfect and really enjoy myself. So, aside from the exercise, participants were also given tips on how to stay healthy and fit. This was led by Dr. Nashele Dodu of Nova Wellness Center. So in case you missed out this year, then be sure to make a date with us for the next edition of the Joy Business Health and Wellness Trade Show. Very interesting dancing moves out there. If you missed this year's edition, don't miss 2020 edition of the Joy Business and Health and Wellness Show. Now, just before we go, there's some breaking news here. And the Bank of Ghana has fined Barclays Bank over foreign exchange regularities to the tune of over 4 million Ghana cities. My colleague, George Raffi, has been monitoring the situation. George, what exactly is it? So if you again follow the notice from Bank of Ghana, what they are saying is that they were quoting or putting out some what the Bank of Ghana is describing as frivolous quotes. Now, it looks like for these commercial banks, they have a band that they might have to be working with in terms of what price you put out in selling your FX or foreign currency to other banks. And BOG believes that based on the notice, they had not worked within that space. And that is why they are coming out to this action, announcing that they've fined Barclays this amount of money. And don't forget that recently, the BOG had indicated that they will name and shame, they will come out for firms that fail to stick to the FX rules. And it looks like Barclays Bank might have been the first cut short in terms of the bank coming up. Previously, right. there were some five commercial banks that were also sanctioned. But listen, that one, the Bank of Ghana kept quiet about it. But now, going forward, they are going to announce some of these measures or sure. actions that they take. Many thanks for that update. We'll certainly bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. And that's it for the marketplace today. My name is Imano Apuaji. We are free. Have a good afternoon.